So for those of you who didn't watch the stream on Saturday, things got a little interesting in Olympia. And we had a on the air during the stream conversation with the Proud Boys. And it did it, I wouldn't say that it started as a uh, conversation, but it certainly ended at a conversation. I'll have more to add actually to this. It's about maybe 10 minutes of total time. Obviously, for the interest of brevity in the show, it's been clipped down for 10 minutes. But also, I will say, because apparently the Proud Boys watch our streams, Jennifer, um, I will say that I think this is going to be showed in a fair and accurate light. Um, and I'm going to kind of show the good, the bad, and the ugly, as we always strive to do in that. And so with that, I'm going to roll the clip. Um, there's some F-bombs. And with that... <laughs> Here we go. And the counter is go fuck your it. shit. And thank you so much. I'm ah, boys. You. Fuck you, Mark. Tifa. I'm out content. Hi, hi. Howdy, howdy. We're watching you. Don't All right. Talk to nobody today, okay? But people use your we, we, yeah. did we Did we not just have a good conversation? Oh, we getting I, an elbow? Yeah, I heard. I, I was just oh, saying. Wait, you're not a communist. That right? hopefully no, I would not identify myself as All a right. communist. All right. <laughs> All right. I just want to make yeah, sure that <laughs> you're aware that people do use your footage to try to dox people. And I've already had to tell three other people today that have been on your footage to be like, hey, people are being doxxed and they do use yours. So I just want to make sure that you don't advocate for doxing or violence. I don't advocate for doxing. I was doxed. Okay. I appreciate it. I just want to make sure because... I was, do I was doxed. It's very high profile dox. So I don't advocate it. And I have actually, if, if you're looking, you'll flip through. You'll see where I've gone and said, left or right, doxing's wrong. I think they use they. They. And I'll tell... Right. And I'm live. My followers have heard me say this. They. They use wedge issues like abortion, like guns, like single payer health care to keep us divided. Yep. If we sat down, and race, yeah. and I, I won't disagree with that. I won't disagree with that. If we sat down and had beers, and we talked about the symptoms, the symptoms of the disease, we would probably agree with an 80 percent, including you and me. If we sat down and then we tried to define the disease, so whatever, here are the symptoms. We think the disease is this. We'd probably get to 60 to 70 percent. Yeah, pretty close. Where it all falls apart. How do you cure the disease? But if we kept having a civil conversation, we'd probably get to 50%. And then the 50% that's left over, we would probably go, you know what? 30% of it is those guys playing, playing, that, right, playing that 30% to keep us pissed off. And then it's the 20%. And I get it. Some of that stuff in the 20%, you and I are never going to agree. Ever, ever, ever. Totally get it. But some of that 20%, we will. I chalk it up to skulls to kind of like, remember the gladiatorium with Roman? Like yeah. Tara? Yeah. The people would rise up unless they had bloodshed to see. Yeah. That's what the media and the career politicians do. So that's where at least you and I can see on that. So I appreciate you for that. Yeah. I appreciate you guys having a civil yeah. conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Churchill. All right. We good? Yeah. All right. Cool. So there you go. Um, and again, the whole conversation is about 10 minutes. You can see it's live. It's all out there. Um, and I think, again, I think this has been shown in the interest of the brevity for the show in the reality that was there. Now, Jennifer, I'll make really clear. I don't believe for one second I'm going to be barbecuing with these guys next week or, or ever and vice versa. Um, but I do think that there was positive dialogue. And we talked about some of the issues. Like one of the things we were asked... And the only reason I didn't include that is the audio was, ver for some reason, I don't know why, the audio for this one guy that was talking to me initially on the air was so soft. And mm -hmm. it was very, very hard to hear what he was saying. You know, he asked me, you know, what, how do I identify politically? Which, of course, is a loaded question. But people who watch the show know I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I said, I'm independent. He goes, well, what does that mean? And I said, there's some issues I'm very right. I said, there's a couple of issues I'm pretty right on. There's mm -hmm. some issues I'm really far left on. And there's some other stuff in the middle. Um, and anybody who's watched the show or been following this for any period of time knows that. So then I was asked, what am I right on? I go, guns. You know, guns and interpretation of the Constitution. I, I love all 27 amendments. And I believe in... in a pretty strict view in the interpretation. I didn't, I'm paraphrasing what was said, but again, people that watch, th this wouldn't be a surprise to anybody 
they asked me like, you know, what was on left. And the first thing I said, single payer health care, women, uh, women's right to choose, right? These are, these are leftist views. Uh, the one thing I, I will say this, you know, got asked the question, am I a communist? And so I've talked about this a lot too. And Jennifer, you and I have talked about this. <laughs> Marxism, communism, and socialism get just rolled up into the same little ball. Yeah. They're not even, they're, they're not even remotely the same things. Yeah. No, they're not. Um, it's just interesting to me how like adherence to the articles, you know, and the amendments of the Constitution has somehow become a politically right thing. Um, I don't think that's necessarily something that's politically like a right wing or conservative thing, this adherence to the Constitution. Um, I think people understand that the Constitution is the founding governing document um, of the nation. Um, and I, I can appreciate the ways in which it was drafted, you know, coming from the Articles of Confederation um, after, you know, the end of the Revolutionary War and the United States finally gets independence um, and the need for the drafting of this constitution. What, you know, and there's been amendments over times, but I think um, when the constitution becomes this conservative or, you know, very much right issue is when there's... Um, no understanding that the Constitution is a living, breathing document, and which is why we have the power to amend it. Um, and also a lack of understanding about the ways in which amendments work. And this fear that just like that, gun rights are going to be taken away, that civil liberties are going to be taken away, not understanding what the First Amendment is and, and trying to use it, um, the First and Fourteenth Amendments, as arguments um, to justify not following public health mandates. These are the things that get me, and I think it's the interpretation of the Constitution that make it become more of a conservative issue. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And, you know, and particularly on the guns, I mean, I've said this many times, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm still waiting for Bill Clinton to come for my guns, right? Yes. And Obama was coming for my guns. Uh, so, and it's like, nobody's coming, nobody's coming for the yeah. guns. Come on. It doesn't happen that way. It's not going to happen. <laughs> right. that way. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter how many guns that you have, because if they really wanted your guns, you're already outgunned. They, yes, they have absolutely. tanks. They have tanks and airplanes and helicopters. It, and and they, they're they already listening to all the communications and stuff. It's already game over. Yeah. So yeah. And what I, thing is, like, when they take things like the massacre at Wounded Knee as, you know, a way in which to draw parallels about this is what happens when the government takes your guns. When that isn't what fucking, excuse me, that isn't what happened at all really um so when they kind of appropriate those particular historical events and then you know use it to fear monger um about guns being taken away and that just goes back again to this misunderstanding of how the constitution works and interpretation of it and how amendments of the constitution work yeah dora asked a question uh, you know when somebody comes one of our one of our our, our in the comments mm -hmm. you know when somebody comes if they've got weapons does it make me more nervous than somebody who's unarmed or whatever um, it all depends on the level of discipline they're showing. Everybody yes. in that group was showing a ton of weapons discipline who was visibly armed. I'm not going to mm -hmm. be nervous about that. The person that yeah. makes me nervous is a person that doesn't show any weapons discipline um, or is not following. As so Look, I went through NRA gun training. I used to be an NRA member back in the early 90s. And then the NRA went totally off the rails after the Brady Bill. And they really mm -hmm. moved from being like a gun safety organization, a gun education. I'm like, out. I'm out. No, out. Uh, you guys are are not what you were anymore. And I went through all the NRA training. NRA, classic NRA gun training is you do not pull out a gun unless you intend to use it. You do not point a gun at a person unless you intend to shoot that person. You do not shoot a person unless you intend to kill the person. Those three mm -hmm. rules were created to make a rational person really think about pulling the gun out in the first place. And if you have somebody who is disciplined in that respect, and you can tell. You, I, I've been out in the field enough to be able to see who's disciplined and who's not. And when somebody's, when you see someone who's not disciplined and armed, yeah, that's that's like, oh man. Um, but generally, if somebody is displaying weapons discipline, I don't look. I'm not a big. I'm not a fan of open carry, despite the fact they like two A because I think it creates problems. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it, it. We've seen this. If people start shooting at each other, or the police arrive, the police don't know. Who's the good guy with the gun and the bad guy with it? They don't know. 
Um, and it just makes it harder for law enforcement when people try to be the hero. And we could rat hole in that conversation all night long. And I'm, I'm just going to end it there. Yeah. But if people are open carrying and they're showing discipline, eh, you know, it's these, it's like when we saw Jennifer, like when we saw some stuff in Michigan, right. And we saw these guys were open yeah. carrying yeah. and they're like holding and they got no yes. trigger discipline. Those are the people that scare me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. There's a big difference between responsible gun owners and people that have them, you know, and care for them irresponsibly and don't go through the training and things like that. So the, the one thing I will close on is this. I, I, I've spoken about doxing. I've been doxed. I'm anti-doxing, mm -hmm. um, uh, whether you're left or you're right. And, you know, they what they expressed was concern that people use my video and content for doc. And I've heard this from both sides. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I can't control how somebody is going to use my content after it's yeah. been shot. And I would say that to both sides. Now, mm -hmm. I will say this to both sides. If you're doxing people and you're using my content to dox people, you're a human piece of shit. Both sides. Yeah. Period. End of story. When you dox people, you might think, Ooh, but you're putting... Family, and you, you don't yeah. know the consequences until you've gone through it. And yeah. you're putting, you know, their immediate family in danger, extended family in danger, because they may not just go after that individual. They may go after their mother or father in another state or brothers and sisters or next door neighbors or friends. That's how far out it goes. And I will say this to the Proud Boys who, who brought this to my attention. I wish one of you would come forward and say Andy No needs to stop because Andy No has built an entire career on doxing people. That's my yeah, challenge to you. So, and Jennifer, I'll close with this. If we could all just sit down and talk, I think we would just be in such a better place as a country, but we're not even willing to talk. Yeah. I think that's a fair assessment. So I don't think that we're going to be holding hands and singing Kumbaya, but I think people get a better understanding and the temperature comes down. People want to be heard. They wanted to be heard. Yes, absolutely. I wanted yeah. to be heard. Both sides listened and ended good. And here's the punchline to all of this. They actually walked by me a second time when I was off camera and we talked again for about another minute. Smaller mm -hmm. group of them. But we talked again for another minute. There were no issues. I didn't feel it was it was all good. And again, I hold no delusions that I'm gonna, you know, oh, we're gonna have a barbecue next week. No, absolutely not. But yeah. you know, I get it. 